No, he, he was good, really, when you think of it. He was. <laughs> I didn't expect him to be good, but he was. He, uh, it's uh, not bad for graduating from Lackawanna Junior College. <laughs> No, that, was, that was a low blow. But I want to say every McNulty, hello to you and um, Maddie Flynn and George Beaver and Tom Jones and Kevin O'Shea and Heather Halls. Just, I, I'm going to be running for office myself someday, so remember I mentioned your name. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. Uh, now we have to introduce Bill. What do you say, like, about poor Bill's friend? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, what do you say about him? He, he, like I said, he went to Yale. Like, around here, like, graduated from high school is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, I dare anybody who graduated from Yale to stand up in this audience. <laughs> no, but, oh, yeah, happy, 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 happy. <laughs> That'll be the day. Now, You'll never talk to me. No, no, no. But uh, we have to have somebody who's a, an intelligent person. I mean, like after McGrory, like you can tell none of us are really intelligent. So we have to have somebody who has brains, who's a philosopher, who has. So so we figured we put we put Scranton on the dais, and uh, I mean I'm not expecting much from Scranton. Let's be honest about it. Like, he might be a little bit better than Brian Murray, but not much. <laughs> but anyway, I want to introduce a friend of mine, a, a friend of Mayor Connors, a friend of everybody in the audience, Bill Scranton. Thank you, Tommy. I got to hand it to Jimmy McNulty. Earlier this evening, uh, Mayor McGordy was sitting down having dinner and they put four Coca-Colas in front of him and Jimmy McNulty came up to me and said, he's sugaring up, he's gonna go all night. <laughs> you got that one right. I think it's kind of a distinction not to be invited back next year. <laughs> I want to begin by saying that I can't tell you how great it makes me feel to have a Republican mayor in the city of Scranton. And I'm confident that with some hard work and a little bit of luck, one day soon we'll have one. <laughs> Many of you know I've been away, and I must say that I can't get over how the city has changed since uh, I've been away. We have a brand new entrance to the city on Mulberry Street. The railroad yards are now a national park. Lackawanna Avenue is now a beautiful shopping center and the Globe is now a stable. <laughs> you know, people were surprised when Mayor Connors uh, decided he was gonna house the Budweiser Clydesdales in the Globe. But uh, they shouldn't have been, because I remember when he was first running, he went around telling people he was born in a stable. <laughs> and I know that he was criticized for showing up at the opening of the downtown theaters, riding on top of a beer wagon, and, and because they thought I was beneath his dignity. And, and I must say that, that it was an innocent mistake. Because what happened is the Budweiser people said, Mayor, why don't you get up here and take a look and see what it looks like from the driver's seat? And he got up, and when he saw the rear ends of those Clydesdales, he felt right at home, so he stayed. <laughs> now, now I know that. Now that I, I know that, that a lot of people criticize the mayor for his show, showmanship, for his telling old jokes, for his singing every chance he gets. But I think he comes by the love of his music, honestly. He, you know he made a record with the poets. In fact, I'd say that the mayor is probably the biggest music fan in our area. There are two things that everybody in Scranton knows. One is that Mayor Connors is always friendly, always bubbly, and always up. And secondly, that there's a large amount of illegal pharmaceuticals missing from the evidence. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now, the rumor is that uh, our good mayor has his eye on uh, higher office, perhaps in Washington. And Jimmy, I want you to know if you do, you got my help. In fact, I've already been thinking up some campaign slogans. How about Connors, Republican, Democrat? He's two, two, two <laughs> candidates in one. <laughs> or how about Connors? Better than a vacancy. <laughs> Send him to Washington, he won't be here. <laughs> now, now, people tell you that you can tell how well a town is doing by how friendly its people are. And I just want you to know that this town is doing great. I'm constantly amazed at how friendly folks are around here. For instance, last summer when I was working late in my office, I left the office. I walked down Penn Avenue to get to my car, past the farm, and there's lovely women across the street wave to me. <laughs> Asked me if I wanted a date. It's a very friendly town. <laughs> Let's see. We have Mayor McNulty. We have Mayor Wenzel. We have Mayor Connors. Have you noticed they're getting smaller? <laughs> I don't know about you, but when Mayor Connors retires, my money's on Bruno Gallagher. in a good word about the commuter tax. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, if I can get serious for a moment, uh, Joe O'Shea has asked me to read a letter which uh, Senator Santorum, uh, it came through Senator Santorum, it is from Bob Dole and it's to his friend Jim Connors and I'd like to read it before I sit down. To my friend Jimmy Connors, Best wishes to you and your supporters on the occasion of the roast in your honor in Scranton tonight. I know you will receive a lot of good-natured kidding, but I just want you to know that in my opinion, you're the finest tennis player this nation has played. <laughs> Even better than John McEnroe, good luck to your friend, Bob Dole. Right, Jimmy. <laughs> Finally, I would like to make an announcement. In, keep, in keeping with this city's extraordinary progress, my family has decided to change its name. <laughs> short time, almost uh, almost a year now. No one has made me feel more at home than Jimmy Connors. I've had the honor of walking the streets of this city with him, and the love of the people of this city for him is palpable, and I am delighted to be here in his honor tonight and feel proud to be called a friend. Jimmy, thank you. when those girls said, hello, I win. He didn't. <laughs> That's why I'm divorced today. Uh, <laughs> McDonald, you know about me, don't you? 
time only. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, uh, where's Linda Jean, uh, Bill's secretary? Are you here, Linda? Are you here? Linda, stand up. Were you surprised at how good he was tonight? I know you are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Connor just said he hired the Tonight Show staff of writers. But he, he was really good. Like, I did a, You know, I, I'll be honest. I asked, I asked Bill Scranton if he would be on the dais tonight. And I figured, well, we needed one person who'd bore everybody. So we could make fun of them. But... I mean, you, Bill, I'm just a guy. I don't know where you got that sense of humor, but you, you, uh, I've been hanging around with you. I never saw it before. But anyway, James Barrett McNulty's next. The whole floor. McNulty said, now don't say anything funny about me. I looked at him and said, Jim, I can't think of anything funny about you. James Barrett McNulty, great guy, and uh, he, uh, he's, I've been, I've been on his show, I'll admit that, he, people, believe me, people, no, I haven't been on, right, people forget, you know, it's amazing the, the publicity that we run the show, and, and, and look at McCrory, he was on McNulty's show once, and then he didn't have any opposition when he ran for mayor of Wilkes-Barre, now who the hell wants to be mayor of Wilkes-Barre, but the point is, <laughs> 66,000 what? He beats out well. <laughs> but but I, I'm, a hap I'm happy with the, everybody here. I'm happy with Scranton. I'm happy with McGroarty. And now we have James Barrett. <laughs> James Barrett McDulty. Obviously they went by weight. <laughs> Dear God. Governor, I have to apologize. This is the most horrendous thing I have ever heard. <laughs> to see Bill Scranton mopping the floor back here after the whipped cream got all over his suit, and the suit's worth more than all of us. <laughs> and then to have Jimmy Connors hit Tommy Mundley with the pie, I wouldn't worry about the governor being upset, but I'd worry about the lawyer being upset. <laughs> Because that suit is, is almost worth more than all of us. But, I, you know, everybody used all the material. Uh, Tommy McGroarty did it all in you know, 180 miles an hour. <laughs> don't, don't you worry about a guy that knows so much about Scranton and he's the mayor of Wilkes-Barre. <laughs> and then he says he's going to be back. Because he has other things on his mind. It's not Joe McDade's seat, Jimmy. But, but, I, you know, and Gene Barrett, you know, I have to first of all say that, that I'm here as a Democrat, and I'm proud to be a Democrat, because most of you are. But, but I'm, I'm proud to be a Democrat because this is really the first meeting of the committee to re-elect Bill Clinton. And I'm, glad, and I'm glad to be here. Donnie Hart is here, is running for alternate as a Clinton delegate. Abby Rafalco McNulty is the delegate. We're all here, uh, and I think even Dave Wetzel and Bill Scranton are here. Uh, not, not to represent the Republican Party. Uh, nobody wants to do that these days. <laughs> Obviously, Al Fazio's not here. Nobody in an elected or appointed office is here. Uh, we're just up here. Uh, we're either all has-beens, Governor, or we never were, you know? <laughs> or about to be has-beens, I'm not sure. But, but one of the things I want to say is that uh, I heard Tommy McGroarty come up here and say that he was in charge. The last guy I heard say that was Al Hay. <laughs> How about Gene Barrett? Uh, he's got that beard. He had to wear one to get in tonight. He didn't want anybody to know he was here. And, Jimmy Connors has done a lot for the Democratic Party. He's gotten that guy elected twice. Gene Barrett. <laughs> and the rest of the Democrats on council. And the school board. And how about Judy Gatelli? We all heard Judy Gatelli laughing out loud for the mayor, the Democratic mayor of Wilkes Barrett. We heard her laughing out loud for the Democratic former president of the city council, but still a member of the city council. 
Boy, that school board nurse's job is still looking good over there, isn't it, Judy? <laughs> Uh, Dave Wenzel is here. Dave, I gave him a job in Manuka running a recreation site. You gave him a real one. And you're still here? And I came anyway. And Governor, if you were that good, you'd be Governor. <laughs> what took you so long? That trip to California helped. I, uh, I really do think, I, I, you know, I, I'm amazed that, that you've got so many people kind of come here tonight to, to support you. None of whom voted for you, but, uh, but they're here to support you. Uh, and, and even a telegram from Bob Dole, addressed to the wrong Jimmy Connors, <laughs> in the Ronald Reagan tradition. <laughs> But who says Bob Dole's too old to be president? No, I no, we shouldn't say that. But the name has been changed to protect the innocent. Governor is, Scranton has given up the name of Scranton. I thought for sure it was going back to Slocum Hollow to protect all the innocent. They're at least dead and buried in the statutes run. But the, uh, uh, for, let me make a, a point first quickly. Uh, the Coken Shacks are here. John and Denise, the, John's the manager of the Steamtown Mall, and they've had a six-week-old daughter, and this is the first time they've been out in public since the baby was born. And uh, Alexandria, Kaylin, Kokinchek, Tom and Denise. Uh, and, and, and All for a mere hundred million dollars. It's the first time they came out. And, and really tonight, folks, this has nothing to do with walking around money despite what the Stratton Times said this morning. The reason you're here tonight is so you can testify about how hot as hell this place is and that it really needs the quarter of a million dollar loan that the, the mayor is going to give us. <laughs> Brian Reed was up here. He didn't do a bad job. Too bad you didn't run for council last time, Brian. Barrett would, would, wouldn't have been here and you could have been. <laughs> and then uh, Tommy uh, Mundley talked about the Italians buying their way in here. That's the only way they could get in. <laughs> they all had to buy their way in to, to the country, because in Manuka, you, they don't let them live there anymore. <laughs> Tommy, Tom, Tommy Munley. Tommy Munley. What? <laughs> is, a, is half Italian. He only had to pay half the price to get in here. But Tommy Munley is a lawyer. A criminal lawyer. So I think it's very appropriate that he is here tonight. <laughs> and the mayor of Carbondale was speaking off the cuff. All the mayors on this side of the room are on the cuff. <laughs> we didn't pay to get in here either. <laughs> as far as the, uh, the night goes, I'm always happy to be here with the Connors and Blum family. I am back again. I didn't want to be, but I'm back again. They told me Gaynor was going to be here. They lied. So I decided, well, it was safe to come. But I was up at Pocono Manor at the Irish Festival, having a good time, you know, with all those people who didn't get over last week. They still had to have another weekend. So we were supposed to be up there for dinner every night, but we came down here instead. That was a mistake. <laughs> But the uh, question was, you said, Tommy, when you asked Bill Scranton, what was the difference between Bill Scranton and you? That you lost the VFW race and Bill Scranton lost the governorship race? The answer to that question, my friend, is $10 million. <laughs> I came down from my, uh, the Irish Festival, I said, but I came down with some marching orders. Number one, I was a report that, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about the mayor's record, except to say this, that one of the people up at the Irish Festival at Pocono Manor suggested that the mayor's voice coach committed suicide <laughs> after the record came out. And my Aunt Florence is still waiting to get Putnam Street paved. <laughs> I didn't 
do it, and I haven't been in office since 85. Nobody's done it since. But I had to tell you that because she tells it, tells it to me every day. I'm just about finished, thank God. But you were finished a long time ago, so you're well done by now. But uh, the mayor is, it, it should be a musician because his appearances in City Hall have been as rare as Elvis sightings. <laughs> but the, uh, you, you laughed at that one, Judy. I'm still a Democrat. <laughs> but I'm here tonight to praise a man who loves a TV camera almost as much as I do. I'm here tonight to praise a man who has been on my show a few times. As a matter of fact, that man is even in the promo for my show that goes on every week. And I'm here uh, to praise a man who even shows leadership and has that title mayor. And Mayor McGroarty, I'm always glad to be with you. <laughs> Chevy Chase impersonations. One tripping over on this side, and one tripping on the table on that side. And how about the egg? I mean, an egg? I, and we weren't even roasting him. Jackie, they should have given you the job. The water company demoted him anyway. You have no influence anymore, do you? He's still the best guy and politician in that family. He goes door to door. I'm finished. I've been finished a long time ago, though. But it didn't stop me. I kept running anyway. But the walking around money is something that Tom Ridge promised to get rid of. And Jimmy Connors is quoted in today's paper as saying that's what this deal was about. <laughs> but he needed to get Democrats to buy tickets, so obviously that's why we're all up here. But he's been a very successful politician. He got Tom Ridge elected, endorsed him, went out and campaigned for him. And he's been so successful with Tom Ridge, the first thing Tom Ridge did was cancel Davis Street Interchange. <laughs> He did television spots for Santorum. He went on the air and said, he's going to be good for you. And he asked them for money. And those poor people in the plot in Albright Avenue, the diamond that are drip drying down there, Santorum says, don't look for the federal government for any money. If you're any more successful, we're going to be dead broke, <laughs> personally. And now, there are even rumors that he wants to be something else. Well, Joe McDade is still there. And I saw in the quote this morning, no high ambitions, though, Governor. He said the presidency was filled. This is the mayor saying that. The presidency was filled. Ross Perot may be looking for a candidate. But Jimmy Connors is the kind of a guy who can poke fun at himself. And he learned that a long time ago from a family that never took itself too seriously, but a family who was always involved in the community. A father that cared about everybody, no matter who they were and who they are. And a mother who wore her heart beneath an Alice blue gown. God bless you. Thank you, James McNulty. Watch it, my
Or you won't be back. <laughs> I, I know. And that's why I have to watch what I say. Um, but I just want to say one thing that that concludes the list. We saved McNulty for last. I'll admit that because we thought he'd be the best. So I want to say that that concludes our roasters. So let's have a hand for all of the roasters. Now, now, we're forced to let Connor say something. It's, it's 25 to 10. Yeah, you know, uh, Bill Scranton and I have to be on, what time we have to go to Lackman Avenue at 10 o'clock? <laughs> but, uh, McDonald, do you want to come with us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, it's 25 to 10, so give us a break here, all right? Now, James Connors is going to say a few words. No, he's, he's, no, he's feeling pretty good. He got two keys to the city. I mean, two, two cities, right? Two keys to two insignificant cities, really. You know. uh, wait, let's see. Um, who brought this? I can't understand. Mayor, Mayor McGrady, remind? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I took my glasses off the room. I want to come back next year, Joe O'Shea. So we'll make the arrangements later on. Because Dave Winslow said to me, am I coming back? Am I coming back? And Bill Scranton said, why the hell do you want to come back? <laughs> but I, I, I'll be back next year. But I want to introduce the mayor of the city of Scranton, James Connors! <laughs> You know, Tommy Munley is a wonderful, wonderful lawyer. I want you to know that everybody says, if you did it, call Tom Munley. And that's, is that the truth? That's the truth. Well, I wonder where Imus is. Is Imus coming tonight? I heard Imus was coming. Yeah. Kevin O'Shea told me a joke, and I've never told it, but I'm going to tell it tonight. And I think it's a cute one. It's a guy and a lady, and they're riding down the highway, and they get pulled over by the state police office. Is Kevin still here? Because you're taking credit for this. Where are you? Okay, so uh, he says, um, uh, the police officer pulls the car over and the police and the cop says to the uh, guy, look, he says, you've been, your tail light is out. Am I doing okay so far? Can I say? He says, your tail light is out. And he said, oh, officer, he said, I'm so, so sorry. He said, I was really going to get that tail light fixed tomorrow. And his wife said, no, you weren't. You've been telling me for two weeks that that tail light's broken. You're not going to get it fixed. And the cop said, is that so? And he said, uh, look, by the way, the police officer said, I noticed that you're not wearing your seatbelt. And he said, oh, officer, I can't believe it. He said, I always wear my seatbelt. And she said, no, you don't. You never, you said that's the stupidest thing. People are going to get hurt if they wear those seat belts. And the guy turned to her and he said, hey, will you shut up? You're getting me in trouble here. Just keep your trap shut. And the police officer said, hey, ma'am, does he talk to you like that all the time? And she said, oh, only when he's drunk. <laughs> time do I have here? I'll only keep, as Henry VIII said to his second wife, oh, I won't keep you long. <laughs> Sister Patrice, thank you for that uh, lovely invocation. Sister Patrice is the IHM Immaculate Heart of Mary. Some of you know the other order that we were raised by, the Little Sisters of Show No Mercy. You know that? <laughs> Where's the drums, Marco? Yeah. Marco Marcinko, he gets a job with Maynard Ferguson and already he's a comedian. How about a hand for the band? Are they great? You know, I was rushing over here tonight and Susie was getting the kids ready and we were rushing and she went next door to talk to my dad and there was nobody home and I was in the shower 
and the doorbell rang, and I just yelled out of the shower. I was so less too early. Oh, that was the doorbell. How about that? So I rushed out of that. You know, I thought, uh, I, you know, I don't have time for this, but the doorbell rang. So I just yelled out. I said, who is it? And I heard this lady's voice, and she said, it's the blind lady from town. And I thought, oh my God, the blind lady from town, she's out there, it's cold, it's dark. I didn't even put a robe on, I didn't even put a towel on, I just ran, Aunt Mary, I ran right out of the shower, you know? And I opened the door and the lady said, you know, Mayor, you look very lovely, where do you want your blinds? <laughs> You know, Tommy Munley and I did uh, go to school together, and that's true. And we both, we finished college in only two terms, Reagan's and Bush's. Remember that, Tom? And, you know, wait, I just got to say something. Take another look at my brother, Jack. Jack, stand up. Stand up. Liberace, my brother, George. Look at the candle out of no greater love hath any man. <laughs> McGrory, my brother stands up against your brother any time. <laughs> but, you know, Tom Munley and I both, we, we went to school together, and I don't know if you know this, but he did get a job with Governor Scranton, Lieutenant Governor Scranton, and we were up for the job, and, uh, you know, Tommy ended up getting it, and it was the written test that did it. And I, I, Governor Scranton called me and he said, you know, Jimmy, he said, you did very well on the written test. He said, in fact, you got nine questions right and one question wrong. And Tom Munley had nine questions right and one question wrong. He said, but I'm going to give the job to Tom. And I said, well, Bill, you know, that's discrimination. You just don't like uh, people from Manuka. You're, that's why you're, you like people from Archibald. And he said, no, Jimmy, that's not it at all. It had to do with the question that you both got wrong. Number five on the written test, Tommy wrote, I don't know, and you wrote, neither do I. <laughs> this is a good crowd. You know, uh, I see Ozzy Quinn out there. Ozzy, where are you? Raise your hand. Don't make any more statements to the press. <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. No, Ozzy, is a, he's, a, he's a runner, you know? He's a terrific, terrific runner. And, uh, but he stopped running uh, a long time ago. Uh, and he said to me, you know, we were watching the television one day at City Hall. Remember that, Oz? <laughs> we were watching television. I asked Mayor McNulty one time, I said, Mayor, how many people work at City Hall? He said about half of them. <laughs> Anyway, the press is gone, so I can say what I want now. But anyway, uh, Ozzy said to me one day, you know, we're watching a marathon, 26 miles. And he said, my God, Mayor, why on earth would people put themselves through that? Why would they run 26 miles up hills, down hills, over the water, all over? And I said, well, Oz, it's, it's simple. I said, that marathon, son, I said, the winner Ren wins a million dollars. He said, oh, I know why he does it, but why do all the rest of them do it? <laughs> That's a new one. I'm trying that out. <laughs> but, you know, Mayor McGroarty, a lot of you don't know this, but he used to work up here when he was a kid. Remember when there was athletic events at the CYC and the kids would come around and you'd go to the athletic events and they'd say, you know, they'd say, Mister, I'll, I'll watch your car, you know, nothing will happen to it. Well, you know, you know, they were the kids that something was going to happen to it, it was going to be them. And Mayor McGroarty said to, uh, was standing there one day and a guy came up and he said, hey, uh, Mister, he said, I'll uh, watch your car for you, nothing will happen for a buck. And the guy said, oh, nobody has to watch my car. He said, I have a pit bull in the back seat. And Mayor McGroarty said, yeah, can he put out fires? <laughs> <laughs> These are all good jokes. My mother-in-law is laughing. Mother-in-law, raise your hand down there. I want everybody to, 
you, most of you know my mother-in-law, Fern, and I've always said this, behind every successful man is a very surprised mother-in-law. And, uh, and my wife, Susie, of course, is here. Susie's smiling over there. You know, until, until I met Susie, I'm telling you, I had no luck with girls. In fact, one day, you might not know this, but I had a date with a belly dancer. She said I turned her stomach. <laughs> but, wow! That's great. You know? <laughs> He's good. The, uh, but Susie and I had our first argument the other day. Honestly, we're together 12 years now. We had our first argument. It was about, it was about a night out with the guys. But we resolved that I let her go. <laughs> We worked it out. We worked it out. Did you like the baby I rented for the parade? Whatever. Maggie, my daughter Liz, and uh, Matt have a beautiful little baby, Maggie, and I'm so proud and so glad you're here. And uh, Fitzy left, right? Oh, he's still here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> well, my brother Patty told me, he said, you know, when, uh, when Gaynor wasn't able to make it, somebody said, we need somebody good and we need somebody who will work for nothing. And everybody said, well, Fitzy's good for nothing, so <laughs> we got him. I wanted to tell you about this joke. The, uh, the governor was telling me about he was coming over on a, on a plane, um, and uh, there was this guy on the plane, and he was remarkable. Somebody said, where are we? And the guy stuck his hand out the window, and he brought his hand back in, he said, we're over Scotland. And the governor said, well, how on earth did you know that? And he said, well, the heather, you know. He said, I could smell the heather from Scotland. He said, that's remarkable. So a little while later, the plane was going, and somebody else said, where are we now? Uh, and the guy stuck his hand out the window, and he said, we're over Ireland. And he said, well, how, how on earth did you know that? And he said, oh, he said, the mist in the air, the Irish mist. He said, it's all over my hand. So a little while later, the guy stuck his hand out the window again, and they said, where are we now? And he said, we're over in New York. And they said, oh, how did you know that? He said, my watch is gone. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are new jokes, you know. I'm just trying, trying these out here. It's like the guy who, uh, who won the lottery, won $5 million. Tommy Shields was telling me about this. He won $5 million. And he called up his wife on the phone. He said, I won, I just won five million dollars in the lottery. He said, pack your bags. She said, well, should I pack for summer or winter? He said, I don't care what you pack. Just be out of the house by the time I get home. <laughs> <laughs> These are all noon. How are we doing? Are you having fun? Sing a couple tunes. I don't think so. You know, Mike and Nora, then, um, you know, what Mike, you know, Nora was, uh, was pregnant, and uh, Mike was very, very nervous. Uh, Nora, you don't remember this. He called the hospital, and he got the maternity room, and he said, hurry, hurry. He said, send an ambulance. My wife is pregnant, and I think she's in labor. And the lady said, is this her first baby? And he said, no, this is her husband. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jack? <laughs> now, you might not believe this about Jack, you know, to look at him. But the, <laughs> but the other night, Jack was coming home uh, from Tidy's, and he was, you know, kind of not driving too well, you know. And Jimmy Clee, of all people, pulled him over. And he said, my God, he said, where are you coming from? He said, oh, McCarthy's bar over there. He said, well, did you have anything to drink? He said, I had two six packs. He said, I had a fifth of whiskey. And I said, and he said, I had a giraffe of wine. He said, a giraffe of wine? Yeah, a giraffe of wine. He said, oh, my God. He said, I'm going to have to give you a breathalyzer. And Jack said, why, don't you believe me? <laughs> he said, no, look at it. He said, blow into this bag. He said, what is it? He said, uh, Jimmy Clee said, it's a breathalyzer. He said, it's a bag that tells you when you've been drinking. And Jack said, oh, I have one of them at home. <laughs> is, is, is Karina laughing? <laughs> She's not laughing.
I'm back. I, I was going to tell you I was going to tell that joke. But I better not. But anyway, Jack was down at the bar before, honestly. You, you wouldn't know this, you didn't think this to look at him, but he was, he was down at the bar and he said to the bartender, he said, uh, sir, he said, can I ask you a question? He said, do lemons have legs? And the guy said, do lemons have legs? He said, well, of course not. And Jack said, oh, he said, then I have to apologize to you because I just squeezed your canary into my drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a keeper? No. 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 John, John R. said that so. What do you think of this crowd? Holy God. Well, anybody who's not my relative, please stand up. <laughs> no, Tom McGrory, honestly, before I met him with his beautiful wife, I knew him a long time ago, and he told me, he said, you know, he said, I'm dating twins. A twin. He said, I'm dating a twin. I said, wow, you're dating a twin. I said, you know, I always wondered, how do you tell them apart? And he said, oh, it's easy. He said, her brother has a mustache. <laughs> you know, he knows an awful lot about dogs. He and Beth Thursby. <laughs> Beth Thursby, the dog lady. Anyway. He told me, he told me one time, he said, Mayor, he said, uh, what do you get when you cross a pit bull with Lassie? I said, I have no idea. He said, you get a dog that'll bite you and then run for help. <laughs> My brother's laughing. What does that say about me? <laughs> well, let's see. I have a few extras here, Tom. Should I bag them? Yes. Uh, <laughs> All right, not so fast. <laughs> so is he real or not? Real? Who <laughs> said that? That was Judy Gatelli. Now, I'm going to just tell you, no, I, seriously, though, I was in the drugstore today. And I said to the lady, I said, uh, could I have some talcum powder? And she said, oh, certainly. She said, walk this way. I said, if I could walk that way, I wouldn't need the talcum powder. Wow, what a drummer. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm wrapping it up here. Well, there's some new jokes that you're going to be hearing now for the rest of the year. I stole most of them from Joe Cuddy, the Irish comedian. Better not put this away because I did want to thank a few folks. And I don't want to miss anybody. You could see how organized I am here. That's why Monsignor McGowan called me the captain of the Titanic. <laughs> now I just wanted to say how grateful I am that you all came tonight again. You're all my friends. Um, I just want to thank Susie and Zach and Dave, my whole family, Liz and Matt, and Maggie and Dad and all my brothers and sisters, my brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, my mother-in-law, my grandmother-in-law, my uncles, my aunts, my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, and my extended family. <laughs> and, did that cover everything, Tom? And I do want to thank the committee. I want to thank Joe O'Shea particularly, and Jimmy Fry, and my sister-in-law, Ann, for taking the calls. Pat McLean couldn't be with us tonight because he uh, He's uh, ill also. And uh, Marie Matajewski and Andrea Karwaski, my secretaries, and um, Susie and uh, Paul McGloin, and uh, Ralph from the Best Western here. The band, how about the band? Another round of applause. Marco Monsenko, Tara Watkins, Jimmy Buckley, Jerry Kosick, and my dear, dear friend, Doug Smith. Aren't they great? And mostly you, my friends and supporters. You know, I say when the, the times get tough, and I don't mean the Scranton times, but times, you're there. And we had some sadness last year, as you know, losing my mom, my sister Tina, and my Uncle Bobby, my Aunt Dorothy, Guy. And then we had some great joy in the family when we had our beautiful Megan, 
and our beautiful Maggie. And that's life, you know, it's sad and it's joyful. And it's humor is so important. And all those folks that, that have left us, humor was so important to them and they would be so happy that you are here uh, with us tonight. And, um, and we will be here next year. You know, my mom always said, what doesn't kill you outright makes you stronger. And we're stronger. They're not going to get us down. Nobody's going to get us down. And we just continue to do our work, enjoy ourselves, try to uplift the people around us, make Scranton a great place to live, which it is. It is one of the best places in the world to live, and it's because of people like you, warm and friendly and loving, and you care. And, uh, We'll see you again next year, and God bless you, and thanks for coming to the room. Jack Fitzpatrick, Jim McNulty, Bill Scranton, Tommy Munley, Mayor Wenzel, Mayor McGrory, Councilman Gene Barrett, Mayor Vidella, and uh, Mayor McDonough from Music, and Brian Reap. Have I forgotten anybody? Thank you all. God bless you. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time, and thanks for coming. the good roasters, and for Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for Joel Shea. Thanks for asking me again. Thank you. Good night, everybody.